Building a megabase but not sure where to start with planning the production quantity and ratios? This question will get answered in today's Factorio tutorial. Just like learning math in school, we're going to be starting with the basics and calculating ratios manually before we move on to the online calculators. But do keep in mind that Factorio has many variables to account for before even getting to the actual arithmetic itself. The first variable is what science pack you are crafting, because not every science is identical in their crafting time or pack output. Crafting red and green packs will produce one pack every time it outputs from an assembler. Military and blue science will give you two packs after assembly is complete, while crafting purple or yellow science will give you three packs every time assembly is finished. Meanwhile, space science produces 2,000 science packs after every rocket that is launched with a satellite placed at the beginning. There is also crafting time to think about. Hovering over the recipes again, you'll notice at the point just above the raw materials is a little clock with a time next to it. This tells you how long it takes to produce the pack itself but this time does not include the time it takes to produce the pack subcomponents, which will have to be calculated separately in order to keep up with your science per minute goal. The next variable to plan for is what assembler you are using for production. The crafting speed for each assembler can be seen when hovering over the assembler in the crafting menu, like we can see here, or it can be seen by hovering over the assembler if already placed in game, either to the right or toggle to your mouse cursor. Hovering over the assembler one machine now, we can see that it has a crafting speed of 0.5, an assembly 2 machine has a crafting speed of 0.75, an assembly 3 machine has a crafting speed of 1.25. To put these crafting speeds into perspective, that means an assembler 3 machine is 2.5 times as fast as an assembler 1 machine. Beacons and modules add additional complexity to calculations. Depending on how many beacons you use and what modules are inserted into those beacons or assemblers, the efficiency, speed, and productivity of those assemblers will be significantly impacted. As a result, you could theoretically increase production rates while technically using the same or even fewer assemblers than you were previously. The one thing to keep in mind is that the assembler ones don't have room for modules, the assembler twos have room for up to two modules, and the assembler threes have room for up to four modules, which makes the assembler three machine the most ideal machine to be using when you're planning on building a megabase. Now onto some math. To calculate how many assemblers you'll need and in what configuration, you have to by now have decided what your science per minute goal is. For the sake of simplicity and this example, let's say that goal is one red science pack per second, which is equivalent to 60 packs per minute, which is a very realistic early game goal. We're also going to be assuming at this point in the game that you do not have any beacons or modules and that you only have assembler one machines to work with. Now I have obviously already come up with a red science pack configuration that conveniently produces exactly one pack per second or 60 packs per minute. But the question is, how did I know how many assemblers to be using? To do that, let's go ahead and back up a little bit, and we'll start by building an equation. Let's start by looking up the details for the red science pack assemblers, and then we can start calculating the assemblers needed for the subcomponents. In your crafting menu, hover over the red science pack, which should show you that it takes exactly one copper plate and one iron gear wheel to produce one red science pack. We also know from hovering over this that it takes exactly five seconds of crafting time. And then we also have to remember that the assembler we're using, which is the assembler one, is only crafting at a 0.5 speed. Therefore, your equation should look something like this, where we're taking the assembler speed, which is 0.5, times the variable we're looking for, or solving for, which in this case is the number of assemblers needed, divided by five, which is the amount of seconds it takes to produce the one pack per second. When solving this equation, you should find that the correct answer is 10, which represents the number of assemblers needed to produce the one red science pack per second. Now we can go ahead and solve for the assemblers needed for the iron gear wheels, which is the other component besides copper plate needed for production of the red science packs. Now I'm trying to assume that you have some sort of main bus system or some large production of copper plate at this point, so we're not going to worry about solving for that. But in terms of the iron gear wheels, let's go ahead and do just like we did for the red science packs and hover over the recipe. And we can see that it has a 0.5 second crafting time. So this time your equation will look a little bit different. We're going to be using the same assembler speed at the beginning of the equation, which is 0.5 times the variable we are solving for, which is how many assemblers that are needed. And we're going to be dividing that by the crafting time, which is 0.5. Solving for x again, the number of assemblers needed equals exactly one. So in that aspect, we can go ahead and take our assembler, plop it down, put in the recipe, and there you go with exactly the perfect ratio setup for one pack per second red science packs. 
Now let's try green science. Hovering over the recipe requirements again, you can see that it takes exactly six seconds to produce one green science pack. So how many assembler one machines will it take to produce one green pack per second? This is what your equation should end up looking like, where 0.5 is the assembler speed times the variable we're solving for, divided by six, which is the crafting time, to equal one pack per second. Solving for X should give you 12 as the number of assemblers needed to produce the green science packs. Now let's go ahead and calculate the number of assemblers needed for the subcomponents of the green science, which is going to be one each of the transport belts and one of the inserters. Looking at those individual recipes, we can start to build their own equations, with the exception being for transport belts because every time those are outputted, it outputs two at a time. So once you solve for X, you can further divide your answer by two, which will give you a 0.5 assembler needed for the transport belts. Unfortunately, because there's no decimals or half an assembler that is able to be used in Factorio, what you're gonna have to do is to round up to the nearest whole value. In this case, it's gonna be one. So by the end of all of your equations, you're gonna end up with one assembler needed for transport belts, one assembler needed for the inserters, and then 12 assemblers needed for the green science packs themselves. How you end up configuring your assemblers is entirely up to you and can be as unique and creative as possible, but as long as you are using the correct ratios of materials and assemblers, the production rate should be the same from one person's build to the next. Let's increase the difficulty a little bit now with one more example before moving on to the online calculators. Let's craft one pack per second of purple science packs using assembler two machines this time, still without the use of beacons or modules. We won't worry about calculating the subcomponents this time since once you learn how to calculate one item, you should hopefully feel comfortable with crafting the others. For the purple science packs themselves, the recipe shows that it takes 21 seconds to produce three science packs. Because assembler two machines have a different crafting speed of 0.75, the equation will end up looking something like this. Solving for X, the answer ends up being 9.4 assembler two machines that are needed to keep up with a goal of one pack per second. Because there cannot be a fraction of an assembler yet again, I recommend rounding up your assemblers to the nearest whole number. So in this case, the final answer for number of assemblers needed to produce the purple science packs would be 10. Hopefully by this point, the logic is making sense with these manual calculations, but if not, don't worry, because as we dive into more complicated arithmetic, including the effect percent rates of beacons and modules, is when I don't even bother with manual calculations anymore. And typically at this point, I just get to an online factorial calculator that will do the math for me. But for some reason, if you do insist on doing the math by hand at this point, be sure to hover over the production and speed effects of the assemblers to factor that into your equations. By far my favorite calculator to use is the Kirk McDonald calculator because it is easy to navigate and understand the information that it is showing. If you guys are interested in using the same calculator, it'll be listed in the description box down below. As far as how to look at this and navigate it for the first time, let's go over some of the key features. To the top left, you'll notice that I already have some pre-filled in items that I was planning on calculating. In this case, I was looking to calculate 1000 science per minute for all of the sciences but if you wanted to calculate something else besides just science, for example, you could be going to this add new item tab, which is the plus sign here. And let's say you wanted to craft 1000 red circuits per minute. You would type in the value over here to the right column. And then the middle column tells you exactly how many assemblers you need to produce that item. All of the information below these initial tabs is a breakdown of all of the assemblers and rates and all the subcomponents, including the modules for producing those items. It can be a lot of information to take in, so looking at it for the first time can be a bit overwhelming, but there are easier ways to simplify this and make it a little bit easier to view. The first thing I would recommend doing is if you're overwhelmed by this much information is to get rid of these and just look at them one at a time. So now that you're only looking at blue science, for example, you can see that this is only blue science here at the very top, but then everything underneath it is only for production of blue science. Another way to isolate blue science from all of the other information you're receiving is to hover over the row here that it's contained in, and then click this little box with the little arrow sticking out of it, and this will open a new tab that only includes the blue science as well. So you do have a couple different options for isolating one science or one material over the others. If all of this information is still a bit overwhelming, you can always go to the visualize tab over here, which helps to give you a more visual cue of how much and where all of your resources are getting allocated. 
The settings tab is where you can modify the materials and settings used for your production. You can specify what assemblers you plan on using for your crafting, the default beacons that you plan on using and what type of modules go in that beacon, the types of modules that go into your assemblers, the types of belts that feed in the supplies to your assemblers, even the type of fuel that you plan on using. The number one thing though I would recommend that you make sure you have set though is the type of recipe that you're using. So if you're not playing on vanilla and if you're playing on something like the expensive mode or a different experimental mode, go ahead and just make sure that you have this setting set to the right one or the right version that you're playing in. Back to the factory setting, you'll see that in the section for modules and beacons, I do have a default set in. So the default for me was Productivity 3 modules in all of my intermediary products and then Speed 3 modules in all of my other products. But technically you could always use this calculator for calculating lower end factories. So if you wanted to use this for calculating one pack a second or 60 packs per minute or anywhere in between, you technically could. But definitely this calculator really shines when using it for the higher numbers or mega bases for sure. So make sure that you have your modules set to the modules you want. And then in the beacons column, you'll notice that I ended up using 24 for the value entered in here. And that's because I knew when planning my bases that I wanted a 12 beacon surrounding a one assembler setup. And multiplying 12 beacons by the number of modules within the beacons gave me a value of 24, which is why this value is here. If you decided you didn't want to do a full 12 beacons surrounding an assembler setup, you would just end up using the number of beacons that you actually have affecting your assembler and multiplying that by the number of modules within that beacons, which is usually two, to get the value that you put in here. This calculator even works to give you the number of refineries and fluid processing that you'll need, and you can even specify what type of fluid processing you want. So if you wanted to use basic oil processing versus coal liquefaction versus advanced oil processing, you could also edit that in the settings feature. Well, that wraps up Factorio calculations. Hopefully this will help you with your own planning of factories, whether big or small, with optimal ratios from early game all the way through your mega and gigabases. Please let me know if this tutorial helped you and feel free to give me any other topics you would like me to cover in the next one and I'll plan on seeing you guys then.